How are you doing today, guys? I want to show off this knife I got in today. This is the Bull Nose from GEC. It's off their Farm and Field Tool Series. This is uh, not that GECs are not work knives, not that you can't use them hard, this and that, but this is more along the lines of something, uh, I guess we would call it like a beater knife. Something that you do not have to worry about something you don't feel bad about just using it for whatever your task may be um, I know a lot of us do that with a lot of our knives anyways but I think you know what I mean it's uh, I guess like a farmer might use right so they are a little more stout I found that the f two that I have farm and field have a little bit stronger pull on them I'm opening and closing it right now so I can tell you um, probably about an eight pull. I found I can actually pinch this blade open pretty easy, so it's not really uh, a nail break or anything like that, but it is a nice stiff pull, which is nice. There's a lot of confidence when you're using this knife. Also has a nice half stop. I don't know if you've seen that in something else that I was not expecting out of this knife. The half stop is absolutely flush. I think they're listening, guys. I think they're watching some videos. In fact, I know they are. Um, so that's nice. What I was going to show you, I haven't made the video on this, but this is coming up. This is also off the Farm and Field series. And this one, so you can see the F and F on the pivots here. Farm and Field. Uh, this one does not sit flush in the half stop. It is just a tad proud. So I think they've made some adjustments and stuff, and this is a, a special factory order. So it's an SFO for CollectorKnives.net. No, I'm not getting paid to say that or to advertise, but if you guys actually want to pick one of these up, he has them available exclusively over there. And he's a great guy to deal with, so I always enjoy uh, recommending uh, Collector Knives. Mike has uh, always done me right. Whenever I go to order a GEC, I always hit his website first. Not saying that the other websites are uh, bad or, or good or whatever, you know, but I only mention his name because this knife can only be bought through him. So he commissioned it. Check out that gorgeous canvas micarta. So even though this is more like a worker's knife, even though it's very reasonably priced, I think this is around $55, $56 to your door, you would expect a little bit of sloppy fit and finish. And I'm not going to slam case here because it's about half the price. So you have to keep that in mind. But when you look at uh, Case's sodbuster pattern here, there's a little bit of gap right here. Um... It's just the fit and finish is not up to the quality that this is. But this kind of gives you an idea of the attitude, you know. Even though this is like a worker's knife, even though this would be very at home, inside a farmer's pocket on the farm, doing whatever he needed to do, um, they still give you that type of quality. The fit and finish is just outstanding everything all the contours are nice and even um, I'm gonna draw your attention to this pivot because it's canvas micarta you cannot polish this like you could the knife bright version or the Durlin version they have these uh, the bull nose is usually always available in black Durlin and orange so the special factory order here was with uh, canvas micarta and they have natural and they also have red um, so anyways, what I was talking about, the pivot pin, do you see how this was able to be polished and completely flush? You can't feel that pin. You can see it, and I'm sure if you dug a, you know, a, a knife tip in there, you would feel where it would fall into that little indention. But overall, it's nice and smooth. Really can't feel it at all. I honestly can't feel it. I can feel where it's engraved for the F and F, but anyways take a look at this they are not able to do that because the buffing compound 
gets embedded into this canvas micarta and just gums it all up and is it's very messy so you can see it's a little bit exposed right there it's not sharp it's not an issue for for me I'm not sure if you could um, bring that down a little bit maybe you know with a drill press or something I'm not advising that you do that you may scratch up this pivot collar here I'm not sure uh, exactly what material this is. This is kind of neat too. We did that brown. It looks like some sort of copper. Maybe he anodized uh, steel. I'm not quite sure. Just trying to show off that it's just a slightly raised and you can feel it. But definitely not sharp. Um, I think the reason that most sodbuster patterns and most like... Uh, working knives like this have these exposed pins is because if you was using this hard maybe five years down the road and the knife developed a little bit of side to side wobble you could set this up against your uh, vise and kind of just tap down squeeze the pin you know you kind of mushroom the top here and the rivet would just tighten up your action a little bit so it's very easily adjustable or if you send it back to GEC they could do that same adjustment there so that's kind of the uh, theory on that. Has nice stainless liners here. It's just a great knife. It holds. The ergonomics are awesome. This is just a classic pattern. Been around a long time. But with these fatter handles and the canvas micarta is, is perfect. I love it. Um, of course, you guys can see that blade shape. Nice and conventional. Has a lot of belly right here. And a nice straight portion here. I've already used this today, so you may see some scratches and stuff. While we're concentrating on the blade, check out this gradual swedge that kind of starts up here and just rolls down. It's not real pronounced, uh, but it's it's a nice touch on the knife. That swedge is gorgeous. This blade is 01 tool steel, so it holds an edge just a little bit better than the 1095, or at least it does from my experience with the hand helper for a few weeks um, has the Owen tool steel in it as well they don't stamp it anywhere on there yeah there it is Owen tool steel so from my experience it's a little bit uh, tougher than 1095 if you can believe that and uh, it's sharpens up about the same holds an edge a little bit longer it's good stuff it does take a patina this is brand new. Wanted to get it on video here. But you can see when you use 01, it kind of takes on that. Yeah, you can see it right there. So this will get like a matte gray. I think it's going to be gorgeous when that matte gray comes up against this uh, green micarta. Check out how nice and flush their pins are. This handle should, if it's anything like the micarta that I use, will get darker with use as it absorbs all your uh, hand oils and different oils, really. It'll take on a nice, deep, rich green, almost black. Really nice knife. And that half stop, if some people don't know what a half stop is, so I'm just going to explain it. A lot of people like the sound, the walk and talk, of clicking in that half stop and then coming out to your full open position. But a half stop is really for safety. So if I'm cutting like this and somehow I spine whack the blade, right? It's going to stop before it, you know, at least I'll know it stopped. So I could actually take this knife, have my hand here, spine whack it, and it would click up here. It's a safety thing. Of course, not as safe as a locking folder, but it's some sort of, at least some sort of feedback to say, hey, whatever you did, don't do that anymore. And if you really mess up, it's going to cut your finger. And it's just the nature of a slip joint, right? This is a great knife, though. I like the lanyard hole. Of course, you guys can see I had to tie on my bootlace lanyard on here. And a nice little finishing point if uh, 
you guys are doing this at home, I just cut it off at a 45 degree angle. It just gives it a little bit more of a professional look. A little bit of a classier way to finish it than just cutting it straight off. And then there's a trick to this too. You, once you tie your hangman's knot on here, your Chris Reeve style lanyard knot, you kind of work it around each circle and twist it. And you can keep getting material. See how I'm getting that a little bit looser and looser. And you spin it all the way around until you can pull the slack out of the top there. And this will all break in, be nice and even, much like on my Viper here. So you can see how nice and even it is. It'll get real nice and pliable. I've got to do a video on this too. This just came out of my pocket today, so I'm going to replace that with this for a few weeks, and we'll see how it goes. I'll probably do a follow-up review. I want to show you how nice and centered that blade is. Oh, it was dead centered. Huh. Looks like it's sitting a little bit to the left right now. I wonder what happened. It definitely does not have any play side to side. And it's when it's open, it's nice and open. There's no slop in that open. Of course, it's a slip joint, so it can fall down. But anyways, it's really well made. I think it's a really, really nice if not the best production sodbuster pattern right now which is no surprise I'm a big fan of GEC but I love this uh, pivot collar color here love the canvas micarta I love that it has the lanyard hole on it the slight swedge on it the 01 tool steel it's a really nice thin grind it cuts great I broke down a few boxes today with it Just a nice addition to my GEC collection that's growing. Seems like weekly. You can get a nice full grip on here. Of course, there's no finger grooves or anything, so it feels good no matter how you hold it. It just feels nice. Nice and at home. Nice and light, too. It doesn't feel... Gosh, I bet this knife doesn't weigh three ounces. So there is the GEC Sodbuster pattern. Their take on the Sodbuster. They call it the Bullnose. This particular one, again, is the special factory order for collector knives. So if you like it in Micarta, they look great in orange too. Knife Bright's cool too. But anyways, I think they do the Bullnose in Knife Bright. That's what it is. I love it. So I'll report back to you guys. I already know. I mean, I can just tell it's going to be a winner. But I'll let you know because this is a little bit wider of a slip joint than I've been carrying. I've been carrying this Viper. And you can see the difference here. You can see a little bit of a wider knife in your pocket. I think it's going to be pretty easy to carry, though, especially with that lanyard on it. <clears throat> Lately, I've just been uh, wearing my cargo shorts, and I'll slide this into my back pocket, and this lanyard just kind of hangs out. And my cargo shorts have a flap that come over the top of it, so all I have to do is just tug that and pull it out and slide it back in. And before that, I was carrying it in my watch pocket, which I, this may be too big to carry in a watch pocket. So I would put it in my pocket like where your clip-on folder, if you guys are modern folder carriers. And then I would tuck this little lanyard piece in my watch pocket so it still hangs. So anyways. I love it. Let's get it open here. you got to be careful. It's got a nice heavy pull on it. That may break in two over the next two weeks. So I want to report back on that. But it's a pretty heavy pull right now. Probably, what did I say, around an eight, maybe eight and a half. So that's it. I've tried to sign off a few times. <laughs> I keep interrupting myself. Hey, guys, I always appreciate you watching my videos. I love making them. I've got plenty more coming. So please stay subscribed. We've got a big giveaway coming up, too. But we'll talk about that on another video. See ya.